Hey yo, it's Patty with a Q&A of questions that no one ever asks. I posted this on my Facebook page and I got hundreds of comments, so let's go through the best ones, shall we? James is wondering, what's my favorite kind of spoon? Compostable bamboo spoon! Ellen asks, what's heavier, a pound of feathers or a Stormseeker album? Come on, Ellen. Stormseeker! Joshua's wondering, what's my eighth favorite dinosaur? Did you know that chicken are basically dinosaurs? I'd go for chicken. Rob Morgan, if you were to fall and injure both wrists, what would you do while you were unable to play music? Sing, of course. That's the good part of playing an instrument and being a singer. So in case you lose the voice, you can still play the instrument. And in case you hurt your hands or arms or wrists, you can still sing. <laughs> Lance Tryon. Is the hurdy-gurdy an appropriate instrument to play in an Irish trad session? I'd say yes, it works, but it's definitely not the easiest. The hurdy-gurdy doesn't really occur in the Irish traditional music. It's more of a central European thing. The problem with Irish sessions is the sets. So if some people come together to play Irish traditional music, one would start with the tune, and then that one that started will play a second tune and then they will play a third tune. And each tune you repeat like twice or four times or six times or whatever, but you never know which tune is coming next. So the problem obviously is the tuning in general, because at Hurdy Gurdis you need to know which tuning you're gonna play in. So it's definitely helpful if you know the tunes before you start playing, so you can set your strings. I've been at a couple of Irish traditional sessions and I've been at Scottish sessions. But both times my trumpet string kind of saved me. Because even if you don't know the tunes, you can still make rhythms. But if I compare it like that, I am a beginner in violin playing, or maybe slightly advanced, and I'm a more than advanced hurdy-gurdy player. And I have more problems joining an Irish traditional session with my hurdy-gurdy than I have with a violin. It's actually easy on violin, because the Irish tunes are kind of written for violins. They are a bit easier to handle on the violin than on the gurdy. <laughs> But as an advanced player, obviously, this could be something that would be very fun to master as a hurdy-gurdy player, you know? Being able to keep up in an Irish session. So if you want to do it, you might have to be creative at some tunes and kind of find your tuning and the strings you want to play with. But it is definitely working. I hope that helped. Oh guys, it's been so hot here in Germany the past days. I can really not shoot any videos at daytime because it's too warm here. It's close to midnight now and I'm still sweating. Chris is asking, has starting a YouTube channel made your musical career better or worse? Easier or harder? I'm not sure if it's right to say it's made my career easier. It's just that, you know, now I have something to show people if I want to work with them. So yes, that is definitely easier now. In general, introducing myself to other people on the internet is easier because they can see my face, they can see me talking and they kind of get the idea of the character that I am. And obviously the number of people that I'm reaching here on YouTube is incredible. And I don't think it would have gotten so big without YouTube in such a short time. So I'm very grateful for everyone out there enjoying my videos. Paul asks, what am I studying at university? I'm about to finish my bachelor in communication design. Michael, if you were to pick your most favorite writer, who would it be? I'd ask for a book but that's way too difficult. I'm not a big book junkie, but I would say the last few books that have really had an impact on me are the books from Teal Swan, The Spiritual Catalyst. My friend Christoph is asking something. Christoph is actually crafting my next Gertie belt for my new Hurdy Gertie, together with his very sweet girlfriend Nora. I'm gonna translate his question. Is there an instrument that you would really love to learn, but so far you couldn't, because maybe it was too expensive or too hard? I am learning violin right now, basically just for fun. And also the other day I got myself a kalimba and this one's really interesting because it's diatonic and the notes are actually completely on a different order than on any other instrument. So you basically end up playing thirds all the time when you hit two tones next to each other. God, this is hard to describe. But yes, I definitely have some instruments that I would love to try out and not only try out but try out to learn and the level that I always find interesting is when it brings me to a point that I can actually do songwriting with it. So on my bucket list is probably the Zekpipa. It's a very cute Swedish bagpipe that has some awesome features. Vinicius, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. If you had to choose between a dolphin with an AK-47 
and a Viking killer whale to protect you, which one would you choose? Viking killer whale, of course. Patrick asks, Xbox, PC, PlayStation, YouTube. Lance, where did you hide the bodies? Remember this unbearably squishy sound that came out of my girdie one time? No, me neither. <laughs> Julian wants to know what kinds of strings I'm using for the different types of strings on my girdie. <laughs> and the answer is cello strings, viola strings, violin strings, guitar nylon strings, gut strings, even though I try to avoid these ones. Uh... Oh, and uh, viola d'amore sympathetic strings. Steve, have you ever performed in the UK? I have performed in Scotland in 2016 because I have lived there. Philip, what does the color 4 smell like? Well, since the 4 is yellow, it obviously smells like lemons. Or maybe dandelions. A mixture of that. Duval, have you ever thought about building your own instrument? I was allowed to help my Gertie maker with my first Gertie and a tiny little bit with my second Gertie too. You can find the videos here. Other than that, yes, once I tried to build a flute and I really, really hurt my thumb and I still have a big scar. And actually the nerves of my thumb are still not completely grown together. It feels so weird to go over this. Part of it I'm feeling and other parts I don't. And this is like super sensitive. And so that was the point when I decided I will leave the crafting things to other people. <laughs> Ed says, tell us about the pendant usually seen around your neck. It's a sterling silver pendant and it's designed and handmade by me. Oh Willy, is Patricia your real name? Is Oh Willy your real name? Ryan says, what is your real name? What's your ultimate goal and what is the capital of Assyria? Stop screaming at me! What have I done to you? Albert is asking about my accent. And actually a lot of people are asking about my accent. And here is a little summary for you. I am German. I have learned English since Basically, ever since I can remember, because my parents thought it would be very helpful in the future, and then were they right. <laughs> but other than the very German-sounding English you learn at school, I also spent quite some time in Skegness, England, in Colchester, England, and in Aberdeen, Scotland. Oh, and also, obviously, American videos I'm watching. <laughs> so, you might hear a complete fusion of all of that. Jerry, here's a question. What season do you enjoy the most and why so? Not summer! I basically get burned like a toast in summer. So, I like spring and autumn and I'm also quite cool with winter. <laughs> I'm cool with winter. <laughs> Everything but summer. I will not survive in summer. <laughs> Christian, can you lick your elbow? Challenge accepted! <laughs> no! Okay, that's enough for today. I need a cold shower now and you go watch some other videos like this one or this one. Bye! <laughs>